lot of Americans think I'm going to get raped and murdered on Couchsurfing. It's Couchsurfing.org. It's an organization all over the world that travelers or like-minded people like myself have traveled in the past or love traveling. And now that they have to go to work, they still want to meet travelers. So they're so busy, they like people coming in from all over the world to tell them about the travels, about where they live, and it's a great way to meet people in, ex in exchange. So what you do is called couch surfing, is that you're able to stay at their house, either on the couch, get it, couch surfing, or if they have a pull-out mattress, on the floor, or sometimes they have um, extra rooms, so they let you sleep for free at their house. So that's what I do a lot, couch surfing, and it's all free. They can't ask you for money, and a lot of times when they have time, they take you around the city or wherever they live to give you a tour, or they hang out with you. A lot of times they cook for you, or you cook for them too when they're working. For me, it's hard to make Vietnamese food it's hard to find the ingredients. So now, whatever money I save on a uh, room, I take me and my host out to eat or buy wine, food, in exchange. So I've been doing that for the last 10 years when I travel, and I love it. So you get a free place to stay, and I've gotten place, great places to stay. Just now in Positano, I got to stay in a bed and breakfast villa with five rooms that people actually rent for like 100 euros. And I got to stay with the host in his um, room apartment with a pull-out bed. And a lot of times he gives his bed because he wakes up early in the morning and he doesn't want to wake people up. Um, so I got that. Beautiful place, like very local. Oh, great views. One of the highest villas in Positano, overlooking all the views. Um, the next place I got was a two-story, very charming house in the heart of Minori. I had two choices to spend the night, uh, um, sleep downstairs, and it's a queen-size pull-out bed, or upstairs, another queen-size, in my own room, shared bathroom, um, and in Venice, he had two extra bedrooms with a king-size bed and shared bathroom, but um, all uh, much bigger than I could afford at a hostel or an, a, a hotel. Even hotels that are like 78 to to $100, you don't get big beds like this. And they let you use a the facility, they leave the door open for you and they give you the keys. So I'm getting like a king-size bed, kitchen, and a lot of the hosts are working full time. So they're gone by six or eight o'clock in the morning. So you get the whole apartment to yourself if you want it. And they don't come back until eight o'clock. So usually I try to meet up with them for dinner. And a lot of them, they're too tired to go eat dinner. So we end up at their um, kitchen eating homemade pasta. Not homemade pasta, like um, they're cooking me homemade Italian dishes that I would never think of making but so delicious, yummier than even the restaurant. I don't even eat pasta at the restaurant. They eat a lot of protein, meat, and fish, but when they cook, it's delicious. I had a pumpkin risotto so, out of pumpkins. So simple and so good, and I got the recipe for that, and I watched them make food, and we become good friends, and it's just a great way for me to save money, but also more important is to meet locals where it's in a safer environment because Couchsurfing, I'm sure, has some crimes, but they record everything with all the emails. So if someone said it wants to rape or murder you, they probably wouldn't do it on the app. They would probably meet you at the bar or follow you home. But I'm not really too afraid of that, but I think Americans are too paranoid about people wanting to kill them because as a culture, Americans, watch the media, and the media is full of violence, crimes, hate, war. So they feel that, that they believe in the propaganda, like they feel that everywhere they go, someone's just waiting to kill them. But the world's actually a very friendlier, 
safer place from what I found because I'm still alive and I camp out in the bushes. I hitchhike. I mean, you have to be very careful with what you're doing. You have to be aware of your surroundings. But people over are very friendly and helpful. And most people don't really want to kill you. It's just they don't. And if they do, then you're going to have to fight back, I guess. But I don't let that stop me from living life to the fullest and traveling. So my experiences with couch surfing, two thumbs up. And a lot of females are afraid of traveling by themselves first off, but couch surfing? No, it's a lot safer than just um, hanging out by yourself, eating at the bar and stuff. Um, I love it, I highly recommend it, but of course, in all things, use your brain. Don't get super drunk, don't just be trusting everyone, you just have to always use your intuition when traveling and have a sense of awareness. Because um, nowadays, yes, a lot of people are using uh, couch surfing, sort of like a Tinder, to meet people romantically. Ten years ago, this didn't really happen as much, but it's the age in, li in which we live. But as long as you know that, and if someone tries to flirt with you or make a pass, be an adult and say no. Or and a lot of females use it the same way. So it's double standards a lot of times. So you can say no politely and still be friends. That's how it was in Italy, and I'm fine with that. Because as long as you a bug, can only try and then people go no, then you both move on. No big deal. It's not like anyone's gonna force you or if they're persistent, then you leave. That's just it. So I highly recommend couch surfing. Even at my age, because it's more for younger people, nowadays there's a lot old, older people for couch surfing. So highly recommended, so the, how many days did I couch surf for seven? Hold on. After that, I want you to talk about that thing right there. The first day you wear that one. Oh, okay. Okay. When you wear that, you put your leg on up there, and um, one I sock in your leg, and one front of your, your face, and one everything. Okay. Okay, mm -hmm. okay sorry, continue. Uh, uh, so the couch surfing, I did pay for one, two, six, seven, nine days. So nine days of, oh, and then 10 days of sleeping in the bench. But nine days, I didn't pay for a hostel, for a room, Airbnb, or any pictures, eating. That I saved so much money on a hostel room, and Airbnb, or a room, I spent all that money on eating better food. So I ate a lot of uh, Michelin, not rated restaurants, but almost Michelin rated restaurants, where it's very, it's, uh, very great reviews. I don't remember the names of it right now, but I have pictures. So my uncle would be putting the pictures in with the videos, and I take pictures. I don't really take pictures of myself eating. I just look like a fat pig. Nobody wants to see that. Oh, and of course, everywhere I go, I'm drinking table wine or local wine. That's the cheapest, but so delicious. I don't need to drink better wine than table wine. So it could be seven euros for a carafe, half a liter. That's cheap. And I'm drinking Prosecco, it's three to five to seven euros a glass. And that's very affordable for Italy. And the food in Italy is very affordable. Um, so all the money I'm saving, um, I ate rabbit at this very beautiful hotel restaurant. So delicious, 28 euros, which is really good price compared to America. How much? 30, uh, 28 euros is like 45, $50 dollars. But that's really good because rabbit's not cheap. And it's at a really, um, really nice, um, nice uh, restaurant. So here would be over 100. I did spend around 100 because I drank maybe two or three wines that they recommended with my rabbit. Two espressos and maybe coffee. So all that adds up. So I could have had two meals. But I like to drink with my um, meal. So that's um, why it gets more expensive. Um, and I ate, oh, uh, the shrimp lemon risotto on top of Villa Chambrion. I can't pronounce it, a really beautiful villa. And that is a really nice hotel restaurant also. And that was also very expensive uh, because everything was closed. It was end of the season, I was starving. I walked up, hiked up 
900 plus stairs. I have pictures of all the stairs. And I ran out of water by the time I was thirsty and hungry and all the cheaper places were closed. So I thought I'll just treat myself. But I regret eating there because the portions were too small. So a lot of like the more fancy, expensive restaurants, they give you very little food. So I'd rather eat at a family-owned restaurant and have more food, better quality food, and not I'm not very fancy eater. I just want to eat good local food. But my brother's a chef, so he likes all that high-end food. And I ate a lot of... Um, oh, another place I ate was um, lamb, a rack of lamb. This place came highly recommended by my local Venetian um, host. And it was actually mostly Venetian. It's a higher-end restaurant. A little snobby because they knew that we're Americans. So they didn't give us the best service, but not super snobby like the way Americans and other places can be. But there were short staff, two people working. I had the rack of lamb, and I made sure, I go, can you make sure it's on the rare side? I want my rack of lamb to be pink in the middle. When it came out, it was fully cooked because I had pictures. But it was so crowded, I didn't want to take it back to the kitchen. The flavor was there, just not the way it was cooked. Anyone that knows food knows that rack of lamb has to be pink in the middle. So at the end, when I paid for the um, for the um, meal, I told the guy, I go, you know what? Cause, well, when I told him I wanted on the rare side, he goes, don't worry. It'll be perfectly cooked. And it wasn't. And yes, I want to give it a bad review because lamb needs to be cooked correctly. So I, I'm nice. I told that man. And that man goes, oh, but how could that be? And I go, I have pictures of it. And he goes, oh, it's slowly cooked. I go, anyone that knows their food, Rack of lamb has to be pink in the middle. And he looked really embarrassed. He probably thought, like, stupid Americans don't know their food, but no. It has, like, certain things you just know. If nobody ever buys rack of lamb with it fully cooked inside, unless you ask for it. So I have a lot of pictures of lots of great food and lots of great local wines. Prosecco and local wine. As I was drinking both of them, and espresso to stay awake. Since I'm traveling, I need to maximize my time. I can't take naps. I need to be hiking. I need to be walking, doing something. So I was taking a lot of coffee just to give myself energy. And walking down the Positano Trail, I was really sore the next day, but I made myself keep walking. So now I'm more fit than I was when I left because every day I force myself to walk miles and miles. To Sailing Gypsy Christine on YouTube for everything sailing, the lifestyle, and travel, the realities of the sailing lifestyle, food, cooking, scuba diving, spear fishing, all the shit that we do, please subscribe to Sailing Gypsy Christine. Please subscribe. Thank you.